Over the past 50 years, the big beef plant in Tama opened and closed several times under different owners. Then in 2019, Iowa Premium Beef took over and processes about 1,100 heads of Angus cattle a day. Now it's adding a second production line in a $100 million expansion along with hundreds of jobs. So that's some promising news for the Iowa Cattlemen's Association after seeing industry-wide struggles over the past year due to COVID-19. From about this time last year to uh, 365 days later to today, um, you know, it's a weekly, daily uh, type process in terms of um, being able to get livestock marketed, um, work with, uh, in a trade association like us, ways to try to, in the right way, make folks whole. And so they, they keep some operational sustainability moving forward. Um, but from a pricing standpoint, we've, we've done a, a lot of work in regard to keeping the throughput of live livestock going to that product that's going to end up on the consumer's plate uh, moving forward. But that's not to say we had a backlog of fed cattle, especially in Iowa, and it's based on the way in which we trade. We trade more, our producers trade a higher percentage of the total inventory on the cash market. Um, and so there was kind of a, a lag, a waiting uh, process more so than other states, other regions in our area uh, to which we had a larger backlog. Now we worked through those inventories, um, worked with the packing industry in some cases uh, to make sure that the heavier weight type inventories were taking, uh, taken out of the, the feed yard first. And so, um, you know, one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. And now uh, we're in a place where we're trying to look forward uh, really excited that it really feels like we're, we're doing all doing the right thing. We're getting a shot in the arm. Um, we're being precautious, but um, you know, I'm, I'm certainly hopeful that whether it's in Des Moines, the Iowa Cubs park or Wrigley field in Chicago, we can open up those parks uh, again and folks can uh, enjoy a hot dog or go to a restaurant and get a steak and, and have a little bit of uh, food service experience. Now, some Iowa beef has to go out of the state to get processed because facilities can't handle all the supply. This Tama expansion could help. It's not large enough, ultimately, uh, to um, market all of our inventory within the state. And so, yes, from a market uh, a packing plant company perspective, those that are buying fed cattle to, to, to work them into a great consumer product, uh, absolutely. And I, I believe the figures uh, 50 to 55 percent of our fed cattle inventory uh, actually goes outside of the state from a sales perspective and gets processed in Nebraska, in Illinois, sometimes in Kansas type of thing. Um, and so when we reference that back to the importance of competition and multiple entities providing competition as well as volume, um, the expansion uh, that's been uh, announced at the National P Beef Packing uh, Facility, Iowa Premium and Tama, is very, very important to us. And it's important to us because there's also expenses when it comes to marketing livestock. And so just really simply put, if I'm in Eastern Iowa and I'm marketing to a packing plant in Omaha, Nebraska, that expense to get that good to that plant is much more than if I can go across the river over to Joslin, Illinois, to the Tyson plant, or in this case, to the center of the state, much, many fewer miles uh, to get those livestock marketed. A year into COVID-19, it's time for recovery and growth, and he's ready. Our biggest opportunity is the, what I would call and express as the pent up demand for the American consumer, <clears throat> the, the, folks on Main Street and small and large communities across the state on the coast to get out and enjoy a steak or a burger or, or something like that. You know, that experience is important. And our proteins really, really, um, th that really affects us. In the beef industry, when you look at domestic consumption of U.S. beef, about 50% of that product uh, total goes to retail. And so that would be the high V's and the fairways of the world. Um, then the other 50% goes to food service, and that can be anything from the local McDonald's, the drive through which we appreciate that, that piece of food service too, to the upper echelon of where the beef uh, industry really makes its margin from a product and experience standpoint, that white tablecloth restaurant. 
And so going forward, you know, there, there's a lot of pent up demand. I'm, I'm really excited how our state, even when you compare, I'm kind of a competitive type person. When you compare them to other states, I really believe we've done a great job uh, from a government standpoint, from a constituency that, that really works together. Um, you know, when we didn't have a vaccine, we were kind of keeping our distance, doing the right thing. Uh, but now as we see the vaccine opportunities uh, come out, um, really excited to, to see folks get a shot in the arm. Um, and I know the reason. Uh, the reason is we want to get out. We want to talk to people. I mean, we just ex we just experienced that today. We had our first full face to face board meeting, and we we played the game in terms of um, the appropriate distance and that kind of thing. But you know, I man, I, I couldn't hardly get those guys out of the building. They were so happy to see one another, right? And I think that's that's what we're looking at here in Iowa and across the country. And to me, I, I really am hopeful and interested uh, to see that really um, express itself from an uh, animal protein demand standpoint. Now, outside of COVID-19, we've been, uh, our association, our industry has really been working on looking at, in our state, ways in which we can find uh, a bit larger apportionment of that gross value of a fed steer or a feeder calf to get back to the producer's pocket. And so, um, whether that's um, regulatory, so we're working on price discovery and market transparency right now. Um, so whether that's regulatory or voluntary type solutions, trying to work that direction. I would tell you though, um, uh, instances where we have uh, packing plant capacity expand within our state are um, kind of that shift to that next step and where we're going from here and that's leverage. And that's truly the ability, not just to be informed, but have an opportunity to put a bit more of the, the value of what you worked day in and day night, uh, day in and night on related to uh, blood, sweat, tears, weather, you name it, um, to produce a product you're proud of, but also something that can put food on your table. And, you know, I'm not sure if you're aware of our, our uh, sustainability and kind of our values research in the US beef industry, but when it comes to getting involved in local schools, local churches, politics, you name it, just that extra, let's build the community. I guarantee you, they might not have a cowboy hat on in Iowa, but that cattleman, there's going to be a cattleman in that group helping. He's back for the quick six in a moment. But first, what Tom Vilsack told me two years ago that we may have now witnessed with a trip to Des Moines this past week. 